Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you live. My name is Vince. Uh, we have Ian. A uh, little audio check there, Ian. Yep, good. And our special guest today is Nicole Hercules. Uh, Nicole, a little audio check to see. Yep, hello. Perfect. All right, great. So we have Nicole Hercules, uh, who is our chair for the Black Soccer Advocacy Group for United Soccer Coaches. She is with the Rochester City Soccer League. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Got it right. Thank you. Um, and uh, she's here to talk about the Black Soccer Advocacy Group and other things. And we'll throw in a few questions in there. So like always, uh, all those that are in the chat box, please ask questions. And so what I'm going to do, Nicole, just so you know, I'll, I'll turn my camera off. And when I think that there's a question, I'll pop, I'll pop my face back on. So, but I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, let's just talk about a little bit about your journey, I guess, before we uh, before we start the slide deck. Sure. So yeah, go ahead and share. Um, how'd you even get started, and where, how'd you end up where, to where you are? Well, first, I really want to thank United Soccer Coaches for giving me this opportunity to present on a group that I'm really proud of, um, an association I'm really proud of. I want to thank Vince and Ian um, for the work you're doing with these webinars. Um, you're giving us the opportunity to kind of come out here and talk about some of the things that are near and dear to us and this beautiful game that kind of brings us all together. So, you know, I think I'll kind of start with the Black Soccer Coaches. You know, years yeah. ago, I was coaching at this... Uh, Brazilian Soccer Academy, and one of the coaches asked me if I'd ever been to the convention, and at the time I hadn't, so he's like, you got to go. So, you know, we all went, and I'll tell you what, it was an amazing experience. I met Daniel Gordon while I was registering, and he invited me out to um, one of their open meetings. Uh, Daniel and Lincoln Phillips set the room on fire and got everyone who was in that room inspired to get involved, and, you know, it's been running with it ever since. So, you know, today we're really going to talk about just that. We're going to talk about some of the history, some of the people who right. were involved in our group from the past, starting with Lincoln Phillips. We'll kind of go to where we want to be in the future. What's the pathway that we want to create for, you know, Blacks in the sport of uh, soccer, but also how we're united at United Soccer Coaches and how we're so much bigger than some of the little silos we're in. Um, and I'll talk about the Advocacy Council probably in my first slide, um, okay. but that's just kind of an intro for me. No, thank you so much. Um, by the way, you, you got a nice crowd on here, so fantastic. Uh, Brian Turner, who presented, who was, had a fantastic presentation earlier mm -hmm. for us, um, he's on, and my goodness, the people are just flowing in the chat box. <laughs> yeah, so, I, got, um, I have to say that we have a very supportive group. Yep. Um, so again, I, I really want people who are watching to really think about getting involved with United Soccer Coaches. Just from that alone, the support is amazing and we have a great network. So something to think about. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, and we, you know, we had Stacey Wilson, who's a rock star and mm -hmm. just holds a real special place in my heart. And uh, yeah, she, she's been on. We've had, it's been great, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and just let you take over this presentation and um so what I'll do, everyone on the other end, if you have a question to ask Nicole, uh, please do. And I'll pop in and ask a question. And Ian might pop on too. So but uh, thank you very much. And yeah, let's get started. It'd be great. Sounds good. All right. So we're going to kind of start with our first slide. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention our United Soccer Coaches Advocacy Council. The Black yeah. Soccer Coaches Group, we are one of many advocacy council groups. Um, and Sue Lee Ryan um, is our advocacy, advocacy council chair. Um, she has this amazing vision of uniting all of us together so that although we may have some issues and challenges in our own groups, when we come together in numbers, there's power in that. So it's a couple people who aren't in here who are currently um, in our group. Julio Serrano is not in this picture, but this is a picture of our advocacy council. You know, we are united, we are together. We believe in advocating for co coaches, for serving them. And this is just a picture of our advocacy council team, people who I absolutely love and adore. They're doing amazing things within their own communities here. And I had to start with them because although the Black Soccer Coaches Group is what I'm passionate about, I wanna make sure that we're advocating for coaches of color. We are part of something that's so much bigger and we have support when we bring our information to the larger advocacy council, we have people who are fighting together. So I just wanted to shout out my advocacy council team. And then we're gonna go straight into, you know, the Black Soccer Coaches history. Fantastic. And 
this picture here, I'm calling uh, the black chair Ru Mount Rushmore here. And I, I can't add myself into there because I haven't done anything yet. But uh, we started in 1996 with Lincoln Phillips, who was looking for a place, you know, to address some of the challenges that black coaches were having at the time. And United Soccer Coaches just, you know, welcomed him with warm arms. And he had a place to kind of start this platform for conversation. And, you know, from there, Lincoln has just been such an amazing pioneer for this group. Um, he's still out there. He's still active. But he has some amazing things that he has coming up. So I'm not going to share any of his secrets, but I'm just happy that he shares many of the things that he's continuing to do. Um, but he's that guy that we're so proud of because he started this and we stand on his shoulders. Um, he won two national championships with Howard University. One was taken away. We're trying to get that other one back. Just throwing that out there, a little seed being planted. And then we had Mike, <laughs> we had Mike Curry right after that. And Mike Curry is just such a gem to our group. He's come back, the wise guy. He was selected by Jurgen Klinsmann to work with the men's national team when Jurgen was there as a goalkeeper coach. Just a bright mind. He's brilliant. He worked at Vanguard managing trillion dollar accounts. He's someone I'm happy that I can call whenever I have any, any questions. And a lot of our young strategic leadership group that I'll talk to in a little bit. They have this guy's brand to pick and he's, he's accessible. You can call him at any time. So yeah. just a shout out to Mike Curry. I know he's on. And we had Desmond Armstrong, who was a former national team player. We had That's Hilton wild. Days, you know, who was a former University of Cincinnati coach. We have this smiling guy here who's Sam Makoto. He was a former uh, Nigerian mm -hmm. national women's national team coach, an amazing Very guy. Good. He was on our last call. People were so excited to have him there. Just his insight. Um, he's a dynamite human being. He actually took a group over to Africa for the uh, Super uh, Cup um, out there. Daniel Gordon was right after that. He's kind of the first person to tell me that I would be the first female chair. And I was like, no, you're crazy. I don't want to do what you do. <laughs> but um, he was he was right. I ended up doing this. And then Kendall, who is just one of the greatest men mentors I could ever ask for. You know, I was the vice chair position with him for such a long time. And he is just not, not only an amazing coach educator, but just an outstanding, faithful human being. So I was really glad to kind of be his vice chair. And then kind of him ha having him pass the baton on to me has been amazing. So I'm going to kind of make sure that we run with this and we take things to where they need to be. Now I'm going to show you guys our strategic leadership team right here. Now look at this. Look at the amount of people here. Look at the names. Oh, I wish I could shout every single one of them out. We started out with only four to five people and our strategic leadership group. And this is where we are right now. This is yeah. the momentum that we have. This is how passionate people are to make a difference in our community. This team, it's one of the greatest things that we've done over the past two years is to add strong members who actually know how to execute and get things done. That's yeah. one of the best things that we have going for us right now. So I'm gonna kind of go into our why. Very good. No, it's good. Okay. So just, you know, our move you around here. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna move your face around so we don't block it. Perfect. Okay, great. So I'm not gonna really look at the statistics over there. I love the MLS, so I'm not gonna slight them whatsoever. They're doing a great job growing the game. But the numbers that we're looking at over here are pretty universal across all sports, not even just soccer, and across right. the globe. So these are just issues that we're looking at as the black soccer community. And these are things that we want to kind of address and get involved in and make sure that we're able to kind of, as a group, come up with some solutions. We're not going to sit here and say, oh my God, this is horrible. Somebody do something. We're going to do something. So our mission is advancement of blacks in the sport of soccer. You know, we had a two hour brainstorming with the group. So we have a collaborative effort where anyone in the strategic leadership or anyone who's in the community can come in and let us know some of the issues they're having. And then we're as a team going to work together to make this happen. Yes. You know, last year I had a bunch of town halls in different states. Any place I was visiting, I made sure to meet with coaches. because I knew I was going to be taking up this position and I wanted to make sure that we had a clear pulse on what needs to happen so that as we're being active in the community, we're not just doing things that we think need to be done. We're doing things that our coaches are asking us to do. And we're coming together as a group of leaders who are active and ready to kind of get things going. You know, so my vision is really uniting the global soccer community through United Soccer Coaches. So I have coaches who are contacting me from all over the globe and they're, they're like, who are you guys? What are you doing? And that's why I wanted to put this presentation together because I really wanted to make sure that whoever wants to know about our program, we're going to tell you what we're doing. We have millions of things we want to do, but there's certain things we're really just going to kind of focus on so that we can kind of attack these things and get it done. Um, and we're just going to go on to the next slide that talks about what our 2020 focuses will be. Okay, great. 
Yeah, I'm mean, looking at that stat, the 38% of black millennials leaving their jobs. I mean, you yeah. know, that's, yeah, that's huge. Well, and that's you heard that from Brian Turner the other day. Yeah. He's an engineer. He left his job to kind of get into this world. Luckily, he's a smart businessman, so he knows how to maneuver. Yeah. But we're, uh, we have ways that we want. Like, I, I'll put it to you this way. I'm going to skip over the first one. Mike Curry and Rob Smith put together a professional development course. They took me through it last week. And I didn't know what to expect of it, but, and you, you, know, you guys will see it at some point because we'll, we'll submit it to the national office. But I mean, there's five parts to it and it absolutely wowed me. I was like, I could think of multiple sections that myself as a leader, I would want to evolve in. There's so many places. I don't care how long you've been coaching. I don't care if you're brand new, you're like a soccer baby, you know, just jumping into this now. Or if you've been in this and you're the greatest coach, the greatest leader, the greatest administrator, there's something you can get from that course. I'm so proud of that. And I can't wait for you guys to see it, actually. Um, so that's one of the things that we're focusing on. And we're hoping that that's something that's going to help us directly um, look at, fight some of those issues that we're seeing with those numbers, with representation um, and some of those leadership roles. We want to make sure that the, whatever we're developing is helping us solve those problems. Um, we also just worked on rebranding our soccer narrative. We wanted to make sure that everyone who's going to join us and be a part of what we're doing, you know, can feel a part of it, can know that they're a part of the movement that we're starting. And it's something that should light a fire in them, like, man, we can actually achieve something together. Yeah. So we're so excited about changing that narrative and bringing 45, 50 people into that conversation. I would love to expand it to 10,000, you know, but we want to grow that membership globally. Um, so this is the main point of having this conversation right now is like, whoever's out there, whoever's asking questions, these are some of the things we're doing and we want to do more but we need even more manpower so that we can take care of a lot of the issues that are happening in our community. We're not going to mm -hmm. complain. We're going to get out here and get things done. You know, yeah. we also mm -hmm. talked about working on coaches CV catalogs for branding. So just awesome. doing one pagers just with a highlight of some of the, the body of work of our coaches who are outstanding. They're doing amazing work. They're, they're getting results, but no one knows about it yet. Yes. But we're going to help that. We're going to help promote. We're going to help highlight. We're out there. We're supporting each other. You see my my whole strategic leadership team is on here right now supporting me right now. That's what we do for each other. Yeah. That's what we're creating. And we want more people to understand that type of solidarity where we're community first. You know, we're community over competition. We come together so that there's a four and five year old little black child who hopefully, you know, 10 years from now won't even know of some of the struggles that coaches today have because of the work that we did. Um, together as a group. Yeah, no, um, this is great. By the way, I recognize a young lady on the right on my screen, uh, Nicole Tiggs. She took yeah, uh, Tiggs. Form at the convention. <laughs> Wonderful. What a what an outstanding young lady. So impressed with her. Um, but uh, and then Carla Thompson, obviously in the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah, keep going. I, I just wanted to give a little shout out to Nicole. As I <laughs> She's one of the most like efficient people around. Like she gets her stuff done. Nicole Tiggs is outstanding. Um, yep. We also were trying to figure out how to do a virtual, I shouldn't say trying to figure out it. Once we can do it, we'll do it. Um, a virtual urban diploma training of trainers. Uh, we want to make sure that we're training other trainers in the black community so that when we're in inner cities and we're doing urban programs, we're just able to make sure that we're impacting the lives of the youth who are out there. Um, we also, I, I'm actually at two o'clock, I have a chair talk video and it kind of started because I would be doing my work in this chair. Uh -huh. and, um, I would have coaches calling and I would have to, you know, put my work aside and have an hour conversation. And a lot of the conversations are amazing. You guys know this. You guys are coach educators. So you're friends with this amazing coaching community that we're a part of. Um, outstanding people who are just just the best. So some of the conversations that we're having are just I, I'm like, we got a video of this thing. So I actually have one that we're going to put out at two o'clock with Kadani McAlpin on our Facebook page and YouTube. And it was just so much fun. So we'll continue to do that just to kind of keep coaches engaged in our community, seeing content that's from us and by us. We're also going to have a social media schedule where we're highlighting players and coaches. So you guys can know a lot of the coaches who are hidden gems out there that you don't know about who should be getting some of these jobs, but because they don't have that, their word out there yet. Um, we're going to make sure that we're doing our part to get the word out there on them. Um, we also have a strategic initiative. We're not just about talking. You know, we have a process in place. We're highly organized. Um, we're setting a standard for how things should be done professionally. So when we're talking about that professional development course, um, we mean that. You know, we want to be we want to send out the most professional indiv individuals that are coming out of our program. And we're going to be able to measure our in in impact with just kind of getting some metrics out there. So we'll be measuring what we're doing. I want to highlight uh, 
2019 from our group. Um, we had Carla Thompson in that last picture. She was the first mm -hmm. female DLC. I didn't put black in there. She's the first female DLC. Um, she won our Black Excellence Award this year. She's just an outstanding human being. She is a U.S. soccer coach educator. Uh, Mike Curry, again, the brilliant Mike Curry, who is just one of the greatest mentors to our group, received the 2019 mm -hmm. United Soccer Coaches Honor Award. This guy mm -hmm. has done it all. He's worked with the foundation. He's finding other ways to be imp impactful to United Soccer Coaches because we love the fact that this this organization is so supportive of diversity. And you can see that from 2019, we had three, well, four actually, Kendall, I did not include Kendall, I'm sorry. Kendall um, actually just got a certificate of just appreciation for the work that he did as the chair. And then of course I got a shout out, Lincoln Phillips, I, you know, the guy who started it off for us, who won the Walt Chisowitz Award. And I don't know who else was there, but that room was packed. Like yeah. talk about a packed house. Like I know Jill Ellis was in the building too. So that might've played a little role too, but Lincoln yeah. Phillips brought a crowd. And I'll also say this, we do a black history month post um, during February. And the one we did from Lincoln Phillips, I really learned about the reach that he and many of our coaches had, because we had 10,000 people responding, sharing, liking. So when we're talking about impact, man, we have some impactful coaches and we want to have more. We have a mix of young coaches and a mix of advisors and mentors who are on board with us so that they're able to make sure that they're passing on their wisdom and their knowledge and that it's beneficial to people who are involved. So it's really a powerful group that we have formed. Um, you know, we also had a record number of clinicians and awardees. So, I mean, we had at the convention, I mean, it was just so fun to see such amazing representation from our community and the support that we had, you know, any one of our people who were, you know, doing a session, we were packing the house, you know, we were, you know, and there's value in that because we have a community who's looking for that. They're looking for that sense of community. They're looking yeah. for that, man, you've experienced something that I've experienced and we're going to fight this together. We're not alone in this. Right. Um, so the greatest thing I would have to say about 2019 was that we were able to recruit a strong leadership team and it's, it's a labor of love. It's amazing support that we have. Um, if anyone that's doing anything, we support each other. You know, you saw Stacy's webinar. We came, we came to support her. You saw mm -hmm. Brian's, we come to support him. Um, we have, you know, Mauricio from Footballers. He does these amazing IGs. We go to support him. We have amazing people and a group of people who believe in what we're trying to do and they're feeling it. And they're like, ah, this is just something that's special. You know, and Kadani talked about it in the interview that we did uh, that I will be airing at too. Like there's something that's exciting going on and we just want everyone to be a part of that. We want everyone to feel like, you know, they're able to get involved in what we're doing. So now I'm going to talk about our strategic plan because I told you guys about how we're organized. We, we want to make sure we're getting work done. And we put together a strategic plan. And it's been two years in the making. We sat down at the Philadelphia convention. We had probably 60 people in the room. You know, our amazing CEO, uh, Lynn Berlin Manuel, was there. Um, Lee Jarrell was there, who's our advocacy relations manager. Um, she was in the room. We had many board members. Ashley um, Fontes Combs was there. Um, so we just, we have the support of the entire association. I just love that they showed up and they stayed for the entire two hours. So I just want people who aren't a part of our group to understand the type of support that we get from the top down, the belief that we have in diversity, not even just with our group, but with all the advocacy council groups. So whether you want to be in the black soccer coaches group or the women's group, the LGBT group, whatever it is that, you know, is kind of your way we're united in the fact that we want to solve problems. Um, so we sat down, we, we did a SWOT. We made sure that we knew what our strengths, obstacles, and threats were. And from there, we came up with a strategic plan. We created a dashboard. So all of our meetings are very organized. They're very precise. We have a clear focus on things that we want to get done. We have subcommittees that meet. Um, bi-weekly, we have bi-weekly meetings. Anyone who's watching who wants to be a part of what we're doing, um, you can get involved. You can get involved right now. So these are just some of the ways that we're doing that. The most important one on here for me is project implementation because we have some of the most creative minds. Um, the black cultures tends to, you know, be a culture that throws trends out there. Um, and mm -hmm. we want to continue to do that, but we want to get things done. You know, we want to get things done in a timely and concise manner. We want to increase representation and we're seeing that, you know, increasing our value. I think if anything, people can see that when we are doing something, people show up. There's a value in that. Um, increasing engagement. You know, we have more people than ever who are participating bi-weekly. I mean, there's probably, you know, one, two calls a month. 
and then subcommittee calls, but people are on there. You know, we had we invited Sue Ryan and and Lee Gerrell to our last call, and we had three former chairs there for advice, and then our young up and coming coaches. So there's this amazing nurturing environment where we're like, we're gonna get some stuff done here. Um, and then also better communication. You notice we have a newsletter, and actually all of the advocacy accounts, our newsletters are gonna look very similar because we want to make sure that we have that unity amongst ourselves. Um, so you'll see that with that group. Um, we have social media, we have the United Soccer Coaches page, the web page, social media pages. So just different ways that we're able to kind of communicate and get our message out there. You know, this I'm just gonna go through really quickly. It's just a project plan phase. And basically we can be in any place at any time. So and so one uh, project we can be in the foundation page, at some places we can be in progression. We can be at different uh, stages depending on the initiatives that we're in. So I'm not gonna stay here too long, much longer because I know we gotta fly through here. Um, some of the things to look forward to. Um, one of the things we talked about as a group is starting a HBCU um, soccer development program. Looking at the numbers and knowing that we have coaches who aren't able to um, find coaching positions, we want to be able to create opportunities. So with some of the relationships that we have with players who played for different schools, we want to be able to start to look at ways that we can create job opportunities for our coaches. You know, we want to do anti-racism and, and an unconscious bias campaign down the line, very similar to what Dan Wook did with the uh, Play With Pride, an amazing thing yeah. that one of our advocacy chairs did. He, did a, he does a great job with that. And yeah. um, we're also trying to build our global network. Um, we have our young coaches who can reach out to anyone at any time and to kind of help them through their college pathway. Um, so we're looking to build that globally because we know that the issues that we have here aren't really any different than issues that are in Africa or the Caribbean or in Europe. You know, yeah. many of them are different in some ways, but they are kind of similar. So, you know, and it, we want to have that type of autonomy to where if we don't have opportunities, then I don't mind us getting a bunch of axes, chopping down some trees and building our own tables. So <laughs> it's just about getting the work done. You yeah. know, last year we were able to get some corporate sponsorship for our social. We want to do more so that we're able to um fund some initiatives and make sure that we're able to take care of coaches from our, our community the most important to here are our united soccer coaches programs our coaching development courses um our advanced diploma our special topics um and then also we have united soccer coaches foundation um which is doing a lot of great stuff to give scholarships for people to come to convention uh to take courses so there's a little bit of something for everybody and what we're trying to build as the black soccer coaches group and uh, here's another thing you don't have to be black to join our group you know so that's probably the best thing about it so mm -hmm. i put this information in here because there are coaches who are always asking me about membership there's currently a free 30-day membership that's going on right now. You can go to the United Soccer Coaches webpage to find out more and to register. These are all things that and benefits, benefits that you can receive from being a member of United Soccer Coaches, as well as joining any of our advocacy groups. Um, you know, we really, and I have to just say, just in, in the last thing before I go to the last slide with, you know, our contact information and things like that, our social media page, um, and then also just letting people know where they can see the Kadani McAlpin interview. Um, we want more people to join us. We're stronger with numbers. Um, there's so many people who are calling from, you know, I have calls from Holland, we have calls from the UK, we have calls from Africa, all over the place. There's so many people who are just putting feelers out there and it's like, you can call me. I don't mind setting up a Zoom call. I right. don't mind, you know, going state to state and having these Zoom calls. We're setting things up regionally if we need to, we can make that call. Um, I just want more people who have been asking because I'm always getting my inboxes full of people like, who are you guys? What are you doing? I'm telling you guys who we are. You can find this on the United Soccer Coaches page if you want to learn it, watch this again. Um, I'm just going to open this up for questions because I know we're probably going a bit over time here. So we'll just open oh, it up. Wow. For well, first off, um, you know, if, if every advocacy group had this passion, um, not that they don't, um, boy, we would be enormous right so kudos to you and the efforts that you made and this presentation by the way was outstanding thank you um and the prep work that you put in fantastic um coach, coach barker you came on so i'm gonna let you uh let you ask the question <laughs> yeah nicole you when you were talking about um uh carla you said woman coach and then you said well coach right and you, you mm -hmm. caught yourself yep so um <laughs> And I think we all do that at different times, right? It's like, I remember Janet Rayford, who's a colleague of mine. I always used to say she was the best female clinician I'd ever seen. Yeah. And then one day I realized 
she's one of the best clinicians I've ever seen. It doesn't really. Um, so within the Ad advocacy council, the big the big groups, youth, high school, college, obviously your membership in the black coaches is spread through all of those different big collectives of advocacy, right? So you've got mm -hmm. black coaches coaching all levels and the same with LGBT and the same with faith based. So when you're working together as an advocacy council, can you talk a little bit about how um, the professional courtesies are there, how you mm -hmm. work together to access uh, resources as opposed to compete? I'll tell you what, that's a group, and especially during this COVID, we learn, you learn a lot about people in adverse situations. And that group was so active. Um, gosh, the work that they were doing for their own individual groups. And I'll tell you another thing that I learned is that we all have different things that impact our personal group differently. So mm -hmm. sometimes I know as a minority group, I'm like, why aren't you guys paying attention to this? This is what we should be focused on. But when you hear from these other groups about the issues that are facing their community, you have to stop and listen because we all have our different, our different challenges and obstacles. But when we listen and say, okay, I hear you, I'm supporting you. They hear me, they're supporting me. And you have this strong group of leaders who are passionate about the groups that they're working with, but it also forces me to look at things differently. I tell Kate Ward all the time, um, I now look to make sure that my program is serving a more broad community. I was watching Creed 2, and it's one of the first times that I saw a, a, a leading female character who was hearing impaired. And I said, this is Kate's experience. She never sees herself. Mm. For, I was like, oh, this is interesting. But I was like, oh, this is interesting. You know, so I start think about thinking about things differently just because of the relationships that I have with the Advocacy Council. We really are a united group. Um, Sue yeah. Rye has this amazing vision on how she's gonna unite us to work together. Um, and it's coming along. Just And this has happened within a year. We all went down and it, I gotta shout out Kendall because Kendall let me go in his place. So I was very fortunate for that. Um, Kendall was supposed to be in Kansas City, but he sent me like an amazing mentor should. And um, that's the first time I got to meet everyone. We were all in one place and the power of when people come together and they just love this sport. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's an amazing group. I'll just say that. So. Now, I don't even want to just plug my group. I want to plug those guys, too. So anyone who's interested in any of those advocacy groups, all of those leaders are outstanding leaders. Yeah, and what's been really nice for Vince and I putting on these these little pop-up webinars is, as we've had different constituents on, Sue's, Sue's been in the attendee list. You've mm -hmm. been in the attendee list. Julio Serrano has been in the attendee yep. list. Uh, Rusty Oglesby. Oh, yeah. So we've, had, we've had really good attendance across different aspects of advocacy and people aren't just going to their immediate interest. They're trying to support their, their brothers and sisters in other aspects. Because at the end of the day, football or soccer is what is mm -hmm. the, the common theme. So I appreciate your answer on that one. Back to you, Vince. Yeah, thank you. I, um, um, Nicole, there are not many questions, uh, but just a lot of like shout outs. And yeah. congrats, to, congrats to Kevin Larry for being named head coach. Yes, Kevin. Day. Shout out to Kevin. There's so many coaches who are getting head coaching positions. And um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm actually scrolling through here. Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah, yeah, tons. It's. I mean, I, think oh, I love my people. I love these guys. You guys are yeah, amazing. Well, well, they love you because they came on. So that was. Uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for for being on. This is um, for. I'm gonna. We'll post this recording. It'll be on our mm -hmm. Magic Day uh, landing page. Uh, really, uh, I love the vision. Um, obviously, in my, you know, I the urban soccer piece, the diploma is special in my heart. Um, mm -hmm. I, my first job out of actually during college, I worked at the Indianapolis boys club camps, right? Mm -hmm. So here are these, here are these kids, right? They're being shipped out to the woods and, you know, and, and I just, yeah, I, that, that's when I fell in love with educating, right? Educating yeah. and, and being a teacher and you know what, I, we can make a difference. And what, what, regardless of our, um, heritage of our color, I mean, we can just make a difference, you know, and, so I think that uh, let's you know I, I know that we'll create a, a, a virtual piece mm -hmm. of, uh, of the urban soccer diploma because for me it's the most important course in America. Yeah, you know? and, and I think so. I, in my opinion, you know, and I agree. You know, because we have we have all these people in the media saying, "Well, we're not getting the best kids. We're not getting the well." well yeah, that's because <laughs> we're not going there, right? And we're not helping. So. Um, yeah, so uh, basically in the future, 
please, you know, I know that we're going to get together on the Urban Soccer Absolutely. Team, Julio, and, but if there's anyone on this advocacy or in this chat box that wants to be involved and you, you can contribute, please, by all means, let, let us know because we can really hit a home run with this Urban mm -hmm. Soccer Diploma piece mm -hmm. with your help. So thank you. And I just want to thank uh, you, Vince and Ian. You guys are killing it with this these webinars. I know it has to be tiring. You guys have full-time jobs. You're jumping on here. You're doing this to make sure that people have something to watch. Uh, I adore you guys. I adore United Soccer Coaches, the Advocacy Council. And shout out to the Black Soccer Coaches Group. I love you guys. It's so thank awesome. You. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a great crowd. But, yeah. uh, well, and we're going to have, like, we might have – uh, so you have 43 on, but I think we got up to like 50 at one time. So we might have five for our afternoon one, but, uh, <laughs> so it's going to be TGIF and, uh, but everyone's welcome to come on. And, and so uh, this uh, Friday at four, uh, later on today at four o'clock where we talk a little bit about soccer, but mostly about whatever. Right. And, uh, have some fun not to make light of the situation we're all in, but uh, mm -hmm. we, we need to laugh a little bit too, you know, before we head in the weekend. So, um, Thank you so much, Nicole. Outstanding presentation. Thank you. You're a rock star today. Well done. You're like marketing. Thanks, you're like a marketing bunny. You're fantastic. You got it all well, in I there. Do. So <laughs> amazing. Appreciate amazing. it, guys. <laughs> and thank you, everybody on the other end. Thank you. Yeah, Bye, everybody. Thanks, guys.